Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into episode 14 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, it's time to bring you yet more stratospheric data. And uh, we're going to have a look at the current situation in terms of temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over North Pole. We're going to have a look at some forecast data as well. And I shall get on that for you in a second, just say that first. Video release here is our 6 7 UK weather forecast. We'll be live at 6 p.m. So I shall see you with our 10 to 14 day up live a little bit later on today. Please like, share and subscribe on day videos and content. And thank you so much everybody for doing that for Gav's weather vids. Right, we're going to start off with temperature at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole versus our uh, average. So the grey line, of course, is the trend line. This time of year, the black line shows how temperatures have been forming where we currently are with the temperature at 10 HPA in the strategy. So uh, for about a week, we have been pretty cold, actually, with the temperature at 10 HPA. We've been down at around minus 65, something like that. We are now seeing the first signs of the next significant warming of the stratosphere, though, black line, we're beginning to move up closer to the uh, long-term average. And we can expect to see this black line moving further upwards. Whoop, my mind went wonky. Can expect to see that black line moving further upwards over the next few days. We've got a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, closer to the uh, troposphere. Well, there, um, again, we do see a black line ticking up, but we are very significantly colder than average at the moment at uh, 30 HPA, so uh, we're sitting around sort of minus 73, minus 74, something like that. We should be up here, uh, somewhere around minus um, 65 maybe. So about 10 degrees colder than average at that level of the atmosphere as well. Well, this is our latest GFS is uh, looking, GFS operational runs. So the uh, yellow and orange colours that we have there, over parts of Russia and into Siberia. Um, that's the latest warming up strategy. Now, sure, begin to start moving in toward the polar region with those green colours. The blue colours here, these are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. That polar vortex at its roots gradually being pushed out of the uh, Arctic and the North Pole. So, over the uh, next few days, so next couple of days, you can see a displacement event of the polar vortex. See how those bright colours move into top of the pole and the blue colours, polar vortex at its roots in the strategy getting stretched and pushed out into Northern Europe, the North Atlantic and over into North America as well. We call this a displacement event. We've had several of these through this winter so far. And even more intense warming begins to start gathering pace there over Russia around the 20th of February. Uh, again, that starts moving into a polar region as well, just keeping the uh, warming of the stratosphere going. Oh, into a more extended range, uh, we look like this. So, uh, another warming bell on this GFS run starts gathering over Europe here. <coughs> you mean it gets around 26th of February? By this point, the PB is really being stretched to its absolute limits. Are you going to get a split? Yes, I think we are splitting the polar vortex there um, as we go through into the end of February. So it takes a little while to get there, but eventually we do see a split of the polar vortex taking place. And um, all very interesting. It should be enough to send the zone of wind into reverse. This is how uh, things look in terms of the uh, zone of wind at um, weather is cool. Dot com. So I'll just get rid of the green lines actually. So you can see that the zone of wind, this is another way of looking at polar vortex really. This is just how we look at the, uh, the strength of the polar vortex. So we can look at the position of the polar vortex. Let's go back to it. We look at the position of the polar vortex or the stratospheric polar vortex through 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 the temperatures, you know, through, through the blue colours here. But to actually see the strength of the polar vortex, we look at the zone of wind. The zone of wind is already starting to uh, drop out now. So uh, you see how this blue line has gone from being stronger than average black line is stronger than average, of course, to um, being being cooler or being weaker than average, I should say. So, but Owen is already beginning to um, drop out. If we put the GFS ensembles in, you can see that it's not click up, though, at, interestingly, but we're going to get a reversal of Zoe. So this zero line is all important. Now, a few days ago, it looked like this strap warming could reach record-breaking Zoe wing levels. You know, the, the green lines would go down here. Some instances going down to there. Well, they backed off from that a lot. It looks like we probably will get a reversal 
does that mean? But again, it might only last for a day or so. We saw this back in January. Might only last for a day or so. And then as wind starts powering back up again, maybe dropping again by the end of March. So it doesn't look all that um, clear cut, but we will get a technical sudden stratospheric warming from this. Quite bizarrely, because you would think that such sustained warming of the stratosphere, as, as we see here within the GFS operational road anyway, you would think that that would be enough to, to reverse the zone of wind, but it's not clear cut that we're going to do that. You know, it, this might fall short of what we would classify as a major sudden stratospheric warming. Nevertheless, I think this will be enough in the end to send the zone of wind into reverse, but it might not last all that long, and then we might see the zone of wind trying to or the polar vortex, I suppose, trying to power back up again a little bit. Let's have a look at, so that's all from the GFS, the GFS. Let's have a look at some ECM data. So these red colours here um, on this chart, which is the 10 HPA temperature anomaly, weekly anomaly for the ECM for next week, the 19th, 26th of February. These red colours, that's the strap warning that we've been talking about um, with the GFS data. That's how things looking for week one. Now, again, we can't necessarily say that sudden stratospheric warming uh, reached SSW temperature levels because this is normally to average of a scale and it goes up 10 degrees or more above average. However, we know from this that uh, we should be reaching uh, more or less SSW type temperature levels with that. So going into week two, which is the 26th of February to the 4th of March, um, looks like warming is being renewed, this time from sort of the European side of the Arctic. So two weeks worth of uh, quite dramatic warming of strategy going on there. Still maintained for week three, which is the 4th to the 11th of March. Beginning to reduce, but still above average over the pole for, for the fourth week, which is the 18th of March. This is the final week. 18th to the 25th of March, then the warming is beginning to ease off. But by then, you would have thought that the polar vortex, <laughs> with so many weeks of sustained warmth, you would have thought the polar vortex will be pretty much done. And this is the zone of wind forecast for the next six weeks from the, uh, or the next five weeks from the um, ECM extended model. Again, you can see that at the moment, the uh, zone of wind is, is close to normal, or has been close to normal, but forecast to drop down and go into reversal but not for long only for about i suppose maybe 24 hours maybe 48 hours we see um the zone of wings there on the gf ensemble plume going slightly into reverse but then popping back up again a bit weaker than average so this is the average line just here so weaker than average but popping back up the reversal of zero winds only lasts for like 24, 48 hours or so. But maybe a, yet another uh, re reversal possibility in time into the second week of March. You'll notice how this thick green line, so you notice how the thick green line should be on ensemble mean, how that goes into reverse for a day or so. Then um, strengthens back up to go uh, positive, but is weaker than average, and then falls out falls away again, falls out sometime around the uh, 12th of February, uh, 12th of March, I should say. So maybe we're going to see yet another stratospheric, <laughs> stratospheric warming um, occurring into the early part of March. If that happens, you know, then that should be enough to finally send the zone wind consistently into reverse. But it's all very interesting. It's a very, very strange season this year, I have to say, I've been seeing repeated, you know, continuous sort of um, warmings, displacement events of, of polar vortex. We did get a reversal of zone winds in January. I think, despite the G GFS on solids backing away, but I think we will get uh, a reversal of zone winds next week as well, probably. Um, but, but, you know, not for long. And <laughs> you have to say, I mean, we talked about polar vortex of doom in... Um, in, in uh, 20, 2019, 2020 winter. I wouldn't say this is a polar vortex of doom, but this is a polar vortex that just will not, it's a polar vortex that, that won't die, you know. It's a, it's a polar vortex that, um, that, uh, that, that, you know, just survives. It just keeps on surviving all of these various events, displacements, warmings, maybe even a split. And, uh, well, we'll see what happens anyway. We'll see what happens. But it's 
a very unusual season, this, PV-wise and uh, strap-wise. So, uh, it's been a fun season. We're going to the end now of these um, uh, of, of these videos. We'll, we, we'll probably start do, stop doing live streams on a Wednesday in March, and we'll probably stop doing the strap watches in March as well, and we'll just do like a regular 10 to 14 day uh, upload um, then in, in March. So, um, we're coming to the end of this season of strap watches, but I think it's been fun. It's the first season of strap watches that we've done, and we will probably bring them back uh, next autumn, winter. I would have thought. You seem to have enjoyed them. So, um, no, yeah, been a fun season, an unusual season, and a fun season, and uh, another Southern Strasbourg Women event, major Southern Strasbourg Women event, could well be on the way when we get into uh, next week. We shall keep you informed within our 10 to 14 days, and of course, with episode 15 of Stratwatch next week. So, um, next installment, same time, same place. I shall see you a little bit later on for our uh, Wednesday evening live stream, being well, and for Stratwatch, episode 14. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.